Happy 19,000. Thank you all for getting me here. It's not a huge number by any means, but the fact 1,900 people have breezed through my channel is pretty cool. Thank you all again. To celebrate, I've decided to begin a new series to run alongside the Thoughts on Theater series, and in sort of a different vein, instead of focusing on things I know a lot about, we'll be focusing on small towns in various states. To ease into it, though, I'll initially be focusing on small towns in Nebraska, because Nebraska happens to be fairly interesting. Duh. So, welcome to What Happened in Rulo, Nebraska. In the early 1980s, Nebraska hopped on the Jonestown train and had its own cult on the outskirts of Rulo, a small band of Christian identity survivalists led by Michael W. Ryan started a small compound along the Missouri River. Because they were in a prime location, Nebraska, Kansas, and Missouri would feel the brief oppression of this cult. Members would go out and steal local goods from the three states to help keep the compound in working order. Some property would be stolen, turned around, and sold for a profit. The early 1980s were also a rough time for agriculture, as the Midwest was facing some of the most intense bouts of farm crisis since the Great Depression. Many looked to someone to blame. Others turned to religion. Michael W. Ryan, a growing figure of the Christian identity theology, rallied followers in the Rulo area. Christian identity is an anti-Semitic and anti-government group that was popular in the 1980s. Despite their anti-Semitism, their higher power, called Yahweh, is the Hebrew word for God. Ryan met farmer Rick Stice, the owner of a pig farm that was struggling financially. Stice agreed to have Ryan, his family, and his followers take refuge on his farm, where they primarily gathered weapons for the eventual Armageddon. Ryan began referring to himself as the King, claiming Yahweh spoke directly to him, and he was possessed by the spirit of the archangel Michael. Ryan, to test the faith of his followers, developed an arm test. By holding the arms of the interrogated, a negative answer would result in the arms dropping, while a positive affirmation would see an arm remain in the air. The power, however, lay completely with the person holding the interrogated's arm. The cult at this point had grown to 25 members. After months of stealing and preaching, Stice and fellow member James Tim started questioning the validity of Yawa and Ryan's power. Ryan had been smoking marijuana regularly and was often so jaded he babbled to the scripture and made little sense. According to court documents, Ryan demoted Stice and Tim and they were made to sleep outside of the compound, anally penetrate a goat to completion, and sodomize one another with garden tools. Stice and his five-year-old son Luke were forced to perform oral sex on one another. Ryan, on March 25, 1985, shoved Luke too hard against a cabinet, snapping his neck and cracking his skull. The injury was fatal. He ordered Tim and Stice to bury him in a shallow, unmarked grave. And soon after, on April 4th, Stice deserted the farm and did not return. Stice then turned his attention to Tim, whom he claimed was trying to poison the community through the food they had acquired. He was hogtied and placed in a pig pen where he endured several days worth of physical and sexual torture. He was repeatedly whipped, beaten, and sodomized with picks and shovels, causing internal bleeding. On the day of Tim's death, April 27, 1985, Ryan ordered five men to whip him 15 times each, a total of 75. The men shot off the tips of his fingers, broke his arms, legs, and filleted the skin off his thighs. Finally, 230-pound Ryan stomped on Tim's chest, breaking his ribcage. He was shot in the head and was buried in an unmarked grave. Two cult members were arrested for stealing farm equipment a month later and confessed to the murders while in custody. The farm was raided and the bodies exhumed. Michael W. Ryan died in 2015 of cancer while in prison. He never relented, saying all was done to Yahweh's accordance. Ryan's son, learning of his father's passing, was quoted saying, Best for everybody. Good riddance. Flush him down the toilet for all I care. It's also worth noting, the events in Rulo happened a decade before the infamous Brandon Tina murder, and in the same county, not 30 miles away.
<laughs> the tone of this video is a little different from what I normally do, but not all the stories are this horrific, I promise. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please subscribe. This is Dustin signing off, but only for now.